Today on The Hacker Show, we're going to be using Playwright and Python in order to bypass captchas and bot detection on Linux servers, specifically on GitHub Actions. Now, as you can see here, this is an example GitHub Actions job where we did some web scraping of various websites such as Copilot and Nike and SeatGeek and Walmart. So we're going to go over the details of that momentarily, as well as the GitHub Actions YAML file that made all that possible. But first, I want to say that this is the follow-up to my previous tutorial on Stealthy Playwright, which you can find on YouTube, and it's recommended that you probably watch that before this. So Playwright Python is the automation framework that we're going to be using today for all the stealthy automation and CAPTCHA bypass. And this is what the scripts look like, although instead of using the standard browser equals p.chromium.launch command in order to launch a web browser, we're going to do something slightly stealthier, which is using playwright.chromium.connectoverCDP with the remote debugging URL, looks like this. So it'd be localhost for your machine, and then a port, which is usually 9222 by default. And this connect over CDP method is the key to making Playwright stealthy because otherwise the default Playwright browser that is launched when you launch a Playwright script, that's not so stealthy. So let's take a look at the GitHub Actions example where we're going to be running some automation or actually the automation has already run. So after setting up the job, which we did with this YAML file, which we'll come back to in a moment, Let's, let's first take a look at how powerful the web scraping actually was. So Copilot has some anti-bot protection on it, yet with this GitHub Actions job, you can see that we were able to query Copilot and get results from that. And then after that, we also wanted to find out about Nike shoe prices right from the nike.com website. You can see here we did a search and here are various shoes with their prices right next to them. So this is an example of scraping the Nike website. Over here we have an example where we found out about concert times and dates from SeatGeek. So you can see here we did a SeatGeek search for Jerry Seinfeld, and you have all the various days that he's performing. He's pretty good actually, he came by this area not too long ago, and lots of dates there. So that is showing that we were able to bypass the bot detection that was on SeatGeek. And then over here we have the Walmart example where we're web scraping Walmart for Settlers of Catan board game, and it shows the various items that came up as well as the prices along with it. So as you can see here, the Stealthy Playwright was able to get at the data right from a Linux server, which is usually very hard to do, but it was able to do it, and we're going to show you exactly how all that works. So you can see here, we web scraped Walmart successfully and got all that data. So let's take a look at the GitHub Actions YAML file. Actually, if you just like click on Workflow File here, it will take you to that. So we're basically setting up a job. We, we might give it a name, say CI build eight, because I have a lot of other builds that I do for testing. And then this one is running on Ubuntu and it's got a schedule run at the 42 minute of every uh, fourth hour seen here for all every day. And then uh, it'll basically run every time you push to the master branch. And then we're running on Ubuntu latest with this Python version, 3.13, which isn't the latest, but in case there are any bugs in Python 3.14, we're just using one less than the latest. We're going to set the actions checkout v6, and then set up the Python. And then since this is Linux, we're gonna execute this code here where we're basically going to apt get a few extra libraries that you'll need, such as TZ data, locales, etc. And then we're going to set that, use the lang to be US, and then update lo locale there, and then 
We're basically doing some testing to make sure it works, but first we want to install a bunch of dependencies. So we're upgrading pip. We are upgrading other Python packages. We are getting Playwright, etc. And then let's see, we also want Python xlib for the virtual display because we want to make sure that it still works on Linux, which generally has a headless display, but automation is typically detected if you run it in a headless web browser. So this Python xlib allows us to have a virtualized display that appears real and allows the web browser to run as normal. So then we're just going to, you know, make sure everything works, you know, test out what the different Chrome binaries that are on the machine. And then we're going to start running the scripts. You can see here, we're getting to Copilot, the Nike, the SeatGeek, and the Walmart examples right here. So here's where we ran those. And then we gathered the data. And you can see here, after all that ran, if you can see that, you can basically see the data coming in and it's outputted to the console here in GitHub Actions. So this is all due to using the connect over CDP method in order to make Playwright stealthy because we're connecting to an existing Chrome browser that has already been spun up. And in order to provide this Chrome browser, we're using stealthy Playwright mode from Selenium Base, which essentially spins up a Selenium-based CDP mode web browser that Playwright then connects to. So we have lots of instructions for that. You have the various formats that you can use, and most of those examples that we ran in GitHub Actions were using the SBCDP sync format. And this is essentially how it might look. You'd um, basically import sync Playwright, and then you'd import SB underscore CDP from Selenium base, and then you'd spin up your stealthy web browser. Then you would grab the endpoint URL and then feed that into the connect over CDP method. So then browser equals p.chromium.connectoverCDP. And then you can do all your regular playwright methods, etc., in order to scrape the data. So let's take a look at what the script looked like for the copilot example that we ran. Here it is. So essentially, we did page.go to the copilot.microsoft.com, and then we did wait for selector, and then a few other things where we basically did page.fill in order to set the query, and then we clicked submit here, and then we basically, if needed, we run sp.solve captcha so that if there's a captcha that appears, but when you go into making a playwright query on copilot, then Selenium Base solves the CAPTCHA, and then your script continues as is, where you can use a combination of Playwright methods along with Selenium Base methods, because essentially when you use connect over CDP, you're connecting Playwright to the existing automation instance. So now you have the methods and APIs from both frameworks that you're using. So for instance, you'll have the initial Selenium Base methods that are there when you spun up Chrome, as well as the additional Playwright methods that were added in after you used connect over CDP. And this basically lets you combine all the features of both frameworks so that you can pick and choose what method to use from which framework in order to do all the web scraping that you want to do. And there's just tons of various examples that you can find from the Selenium Base examples stealthy playwright mode folder. Actually, let's see, it's the Selenium Base examples CDP mode playwright. And then if we do an LS, you can see all the various examples that are already there that you can run. So if we want to run any of these locally, we could just do python raw copilot sync.py. And then you can see that you're going into the Copilot website. There's the CAPTCHA that came in, but then we used the Selenium Base Solve CAPTCHA method in order to get past that. And then we were able to get at all that data from Copilot. And this is the exact same example that ran successfully from GitHub Actions right here. So if we go up to Copilot, this is the data that we got here. 
And here's how it looks like running from the screen, although it looks a little messy with the font size and all, making it wide and all that. But essentially, there are uh, there's the data. So there are lots of other examples that you can run. So for instance, we ran a SeatGeek example. So we could do Python raw SeatGeek sync dot py. And here's how that one looks like when you run it from your local machine. We did a search for Jerry Seinfeld, and then it showed all the shows near the location near you, and then it outputted that to the console. But technically, it'll show all the shows all across the US. So here you go. Here you have that. So that was the other example that we ran here. Uh, let's see, Raw Seat Geek. So it looked like that. There was also an example where we ran the automation on the Nike website. You can see it bypassing captures and anti-bot defenses and GitHub actions here. But if you want to see that one locally, we can do, let's see, Python raw Nike sync.py. Spins up the web browser. Then it's going to do the search once it finishes the page for Pegasus and then it finds all the Nike shoes that have Pegasus in the name and it outputs that to the console. And that was the same thing that we ran here in GitHub Actions. So as you can see here, whatever you can run locally will also work in GitHub Actions because it also has the ability to be stealthy if it's configured properly. And we showed you all the steps that you needed in your GitHub Actions.yml file. Now, if you can't memorize all this, don't worry. You can just fork the repo or clone it, etc., and then copy out the YAML file so that you can get all the specific details that you'll need in order to make your automation stealthy when running from a Linux server, such as GitHub Actions. Now, if you plan on doing like intense uh, automation where you're running at a high frequency, this is where you may need to use something called residential proxies. Now there are lots of different companies out there that provide residential proxies where basically you can set a proxy and run your automation using that. So for instance, Bright Data is one such company that provides them. And I'm mentioning them now because they actually use Selenium Base a lot. As you can see here, if you do a search in the Bright Data blog, they've got a lot of posts of Selenium Base, which is the framework that uh, we're using in order to provide the stealthy web browser. And they have a few different guides on using proxies with Selenium Base, specifically their Bright Data proxies, etc., and bypassing Cloudflare and all that. So Bright Data is one such option for getting these residential proxies. And in order to set the proxy when you run your script, there may be a few different things that you'll want to add. So for instance, when you run your script, well, let's actually go into a script so you can see what we would change. So inside here where we have various options, such as here, we're setting locale equals en, and then add block equals true. We could do something such as proxy equals, and then it would be like user colon pass at IP colon uh, port. And then assuming you actually have a real username and password and a real IP address and a real port number, that'll work. However, one other thing you'll need to add due to some recent changes in Chrome, you want to set use Chromium equals true because instead of using regular Chrome, we're going to use Chromium instead. And if it's not already on your system, it will get downloaded. Essentially, Chromium is a bare bones version of Chrome. So let's just run that same example there, but let's do it without the proxy since we didn't give it real proxy data. This is the raw footlocker sync example. So if we do Python raw footlocker sync.py, you'll see it spun up a Chromium browser instead of regular Chrome. And the big difference here is that with Chromium, there's basically more features supported than Chrome because due to security reasons, okay, first you can see all the data that came in. Due to security reasons, 
Recently, Chrome removed the load extension command line option in official branded Chrome builds, starting with version 137, in order to improve security and stability. However, for people who do a lot of automation, they might be using extensions as well. So this also prevented extensions from loading from the command line when launching a regular Chrome browser. Now there are uh, some tricky workarounds, but the easiest one is essentially to use Chromium instead of Chrome, or the regular base Chromium browser instead of Google Chrome, and then you still have the load extension command line switch, which is what you need in order to load extensions. And since proxy is being set via ex an extension, you'll want that in. However, if you're using regular Selenium base, proxy is also able to be set when activating CDP mode, because then proxy is set via the Chrome DevTools protocol instead of extension. And you'd have to change your script a little bit if you're using the Playwright version such as here, because you'd have to load the URL before actually going to do actions with Playwright. So you wouldn't be able to use page.goto, you'd have to do like sb.open and then your URL. And then if you're using the proxy arg, so for instance, if we weren't using use Chromium, if we had proxy equals user colon pass at IP colon port, then all of a sudden when you open the URL like that with Selenium base, then the proxy settings would take effect because Selenium Base would set those settings via the Chrome DevTools protocol. All right, so that is probably a lot of information for you to digest today. For more details, you can check out the MD Mints undetected testing repo on GitHub, where I'm actually running these examples. And you can take a look at the YAML file that's also there. And this will be the key to showing you how to do stealthy web automation. There's also lots of docs on the playwright.dev website itself. And of course, the Selenium Base GitHub repo, which if you go to the Stealthy Playwright link, you'll find the Stealthy Playwright mode documentation. And that will basically show you how to get set up with running Playwright in a very stealthy way. Additionally, there's also a Discord server. So if you do a search for Playwright on Discord, you'll actually get two results right now. You'll have the regular Playwright Discord, and you'll have the Selenium-based Discord now that there is a stealthy Playwright mode there. So if you basically go into the Selenium-based Discord, you'll find a wide range of uh, channels that you can go to. There's a stealthy Playwright channel, there's the CDP mode channel, etc. So there's lots of different ways to join the community in order to get more information. And of course, the regular Playwright Python repo has examples of using connect over CDP, which is the key to making Playwright stealthy because you're going to be connecting to a stealthy instance of Playwright rather than launching the regular browser that Playwright provides, which isn't as stealthy. All right, well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you have a great time automating, and I will see you all next time. See you later.